Hello and welcome to Quick Tips by Go Engineer. My name is Tandy Banks and today in this quick tip I'm going to show you uh, how we can use some of the features within SolidWorks assemblies to create a volume study. And so if I look inside my tank here I can see that I've got some internal features like a ladder and a vent tube. I've got a manway in here and this would make it difficult to model the water volume or, or the material volume uh, based off of traditional methods using extrudes and revolves. And so what I have done is I've started with an extrude. I've got a cylinder of water in this example and I've made it that concentric to my tank and I've made it coincident to the bottom of my flanges. By editing this part in the context of this assembly I'm, I'm given some extra features. In the insert menu features cavity I'm able to subtract components away from this particular model, this, this water that I've got. So I'm going to select all my components. I don't need to scale using any shrinkage factors like I would for a mold. And I'll go ahead and accept the default there. And I'm, I'm posed with the question, do I want to keep all bodies or do I only want to keep selected bodies? And if you're not quite sure, choose the all bodies option. You'll be able to delete those in the part file. But I'm going to choose the selected bodies option and body two, and that's going to save me a couple of steps. If I get out of the edit component uh, function there, get back to edit assembly, I will open this part up in its own uh, window so that we can work it in a little bit. You can see here that I've got a model representing the internal of that tank with the ladder and the vent tube subtracted from it. But I don't want to just do a, a mass properties uh, in this one static state. I can see here I've got you know, 327 a uh, thousand cubic inches of material, not quite uh, 12, uh, 6 tons of, of uh, weight. But I want to look at this in multiple configurations with multiple heights of uh, liquid uh, level. So I'm going to start this off by uh, creating a sketch in here. And this is going to define the, the height of that liquid. I'm going to use an open profile for this cut just to save me a few steps. Whenever you make a cut using the uh, open profile, it's going to be a through all by default. All you've got to do is choose which side of that profile that you want to cut away. So I'm going to cut away the top side of this and now I'm left with 100 inches of liquid level and the volume that's associated with that. One of the things that I'm going to do before I move into my configurations is I want to check on my properties. I've created a configuration specific property, I've named that volume, and I've got that tied to the computed volume of this particular model. By taking 10 inches of height uh, off of the water level, I've knocked this down to 287,000 uh, cubic inches. I'll accept that, and now I'm going to use design table. Uh, design tables are found under our tables menu, and this is a, a table driven or an Excel based driven configurator. I'm going to use the auto create option and whenever I do that it interrogates my model and it comes back and says uh, you might have some dimensions that you want to drive and that's the case here. I want to drive dimension one at sketch two and this is my height of my cut. Uh, I'll start my configuration names but I'll use the uh, nice functions within Excel to set my series and I'm going to go in 10 inch increments between uh, 100 and, and 10 here. More copy and paste those values and that'll set the heights you know, this is our configuration name this is the height of my cut whenever I select out here in white space SOLIDWORKS is quickly going to create those 10 configurations for me if I look over my configuration uh, manager I'm able to uh, cycle through those the reason why I'm cycling through the through these is I want the computed volume to be propagated into my properties that I set up um, as that configuration specific property a while ago. These volume studies are very important, um, volume or weight, either one. Uh, if you're doing uh, anything that, that the center of mass, center of gravity is very important. If you're doing loads that transport, things that work for um, shipping designs, being able to have the center of gravity uh, of this particular mass is very important. So what I'm able to do is to edit that table and whenever I uh, get back into the design table, it recognizes that that volume property has been propagated to each of those configurations. 
I'll accept to add that in my design table and you can see here quickly that I have cubic inches of volume related to the liquid level. And what I want to do is just quickly set in a um, formula. I'm going to divide that by 231 so I'm converting cubic inches to gallons. And there you can see very quickly that it's a 60 inches of water level. I've got 547 gallons in, in my tank. Again, invoking mass properties, I can see you know, my centers of gravity, my um, moments of inertia, volume, mass, all those great things that we get from having the solid models created, in this case, of the water that's inside my tank. Quickly flip over here and we'll go to a, a section view so that way you can see the water inside of our tank. I appreciate you tuning in to this quick tip by Go Engineer today. My name is Tandy Banks.